Welcome to Electron Line. Now here's a really nice example why the convolution works so nicely. We're starting with a very simple circuit. We have a current source. The current source puts out a current of 1 amp for a period of 2 seconds. The circuit exists of a resistor and an inductor in parallel. What we're trying to calculate is the current response through the inductor because of the input of the 2 seconds of 1 amp of current into the circuit. We can represent the input, which is called the excitation of the circuit, by these two unit functions. And so be careful, this 2 here is really part of the, the graph there. So we have the unit step function that starts at t equals 0, and then minus the unit step function that starts at time equals 2, so that gives you that 2 second pulse right there. If we try to find the input to the circuit in the frequency domain, we would convert that, we do the Laplace transform, we get 1 over s, minus 1 over s times e to the minus 2s. This is for the 2 second delay. Now what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find the impulse response of the circuit. We can do that because, well, first of all, the reason why we need to do that is because the convolution of the impulse response with the excitation of the circuit will give us the response of the circuit, and that's what we're looking for. So we're going to convolve h and i, the i of the source and the impulse response of the circuit. How do we get the impulse response of the circuit? Well, it turns out that what we need to do is find the h of t in the frequency domain. So what we do here is we find that the output here can be defined as equal to the input, and of course this is easy to do in the frequency demand, times the ratio of the resistance, or in this case the reactance in the other branch, divided by the total reactance of the two branches. So that's the resistance in the other branch divided by the sum of the resistance and the reactance of the inductor. Of course, converting that into the frequency domain, we write this as R divided by R plus L times S. And to make things simple for us, we've defined the resistance as 1 ohm and the inductance as 1 henry. Unlikely in a real circuit, but it just makes it easy to show how that works. So when we plug in 1 for R and 1 for L, then we can see here that the output current to the inductor in the frequency domain is equal to the input of the source times the ratio of 1 over, and we could have written S plus 1 or 1 plus S. <clears throat> we can now define the impulse response in the frequency domain as the ratio of the output current divided by the input current, which is therefore equal to 1, um, let's see here, so output divided by input, which is equal to what we have over there, 1 over 1 plus s. If we now take the inverse Laplace transform, notice of the impulse response in the frequency domain, we get the impulse response in the time domain, which is what we're after, which is the unit function, which is 1 times e to the minus t. We're now finally ready to start using the convolution to find the, the response of the circuit in the time domain. So what we're going to do is we're going to convolve this circuit, this function right here with, let's see here, let me draw that function there. So if I draw that function, so here we have h of t versus t, and the function, this is equal to 1, so we can say this is basically e to the minus t, and so starting at 1, it'll then decrease in value like that. So we have 1 here, this goes on forever, and that's the, this is equal to h of t, and this is equal to i of t. So now we're going to do the convolution, and it makes a lot more sense to go ahead and use this one to fold and slide across this one, and that's what we're going to do. So step one, we're going to fold, and remember that h convolved with i is the same as i convolved with h, so it doesn't matter which ones we fold and slide. So we're going to fold i of t, which is now going to become i of negative tau. When we do that, we fold it over, we find the mirror image across the vertical axis, so that's what then it looks like this. Minus 2 to 0, this is 1, this here is i of tau, and this here is tau. So now we have folded it, now we're going to slide it, right? So step 2, we're going to slide the function across, then looks like this. Now this will be t, this is 0, and this is going to be t minus 2. Remember that this is a pulse of 2 seconds, so this is still i of tau, and this is tau. And the height of that is still equal to 1. Alright, so now we're going to slide that 
across this one and there's going to be two separate periods in time where we are interested. The first period in time is when we slide across like this. So we're going to have this sliding like this and this is the only overlap right here. So this will be t, this is t minus 2 and this is 0. So you can see that if we integrate the limits of integration is going to be from 0 to t. Now let's write the definition. So f cross g, well in this case we're going to use, uh, how about h cross i. So we have h, not cross, why did I say cross? Convolve. So we're going, convolving h and i, and this is going to be equal to the integral. The limits are going to be from 0 to t, because that's the overlap from 0 to t, of h, which is going to be e to the minus t, right? Do we, yeah, e to the minus t, e to the minus, and of course we use the dummy variable tau, multiply times the height of the sliding function, and the height of the sliding function is equal to 1, times d tau. Now that's not a bad integral, so when we integrate that, that is equal to minus e to the minus tau, evaluated from 0 to t, plug in the upper limit, we get, well, I'll take the minus 1 separate here, so we have minus 1 times e to the minus t, minus e to the 0. e to the 0 is 1, and then if we multiply this times a minus 1, we basically reverse that, so this is going to be equal to 1 minus e to the minus t. And that is the convolution, which means that is the output response for the period. This is i of t of, this, uh, of the, that's the output, for the period when you slide this across. Now that was, that's going to be a two second period. So this is good for zero less than t less than two seconds. So for this time period, for the first two seconds, this function is going to slide across here until the whole function is across the decaying input. All right, so now we need to do it again as the function continues to slide outwards. Now we're going to take the period from t greater than 2, and it's a good idea to graph it to see the limits of integration. So here's the decaying function, so here we have e to the minus tau, and there we have the sliding function that goes across like this, so we have t and t minus 2. Those are going to be the limits of the, in, of the limits of integration as the function slides across e to the minus tau. That means that h convolved with i is going to be equal to the integral of still going to be e to the minus tau, e to the minus tau, multiplied times the height of the sliding function which is 1 times d tau, however the limits are now going to be from t minus 2 to t. So we get the exact same integral this is going to be equal to minus e to the minus t, or, okay, no, 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 this, I need to use the dummy variable tau. Did I do that right here? Yes, I did. So I need to use the dummy variable tau. I'm going to evaluate it from t minus 2 to t. All right, so those are my limits of integration. So this is equal to, when I plug in the upper limit, I get minus 1 multiplied times, plug in the upper limit, I get e to the minus t, minus, when I plug in the lower limit, this e to the minus quantity, t minus 2. Notice the minus times the minus makes that a plus, so this will be 2 minus t. I can factor out an e to the 2, so this becomes, and I can switch positions. Uh, let's do that that way, so I have, this is equal to e to the second power, when I factor out an e to the positive 2, times e to the minus t and then minus e to the minus t, so first of all this negative simply switch the order of these two, so e to the minus 2 goes last, and e to the minus t minus 2 goes first, but I can factor out an e squared, and then I can factor out an e to the minus t, so this becomes equal to e to the minus t times the quantity e squared minus 1. And this here is the convolution of the, what we call the impulse response and the excitation, you convolve that for the time period greater than two seconds. And so this will be the response of the current to the inductor from two seconds onward. You can see e to the minus t is a decaying function, but the initial point when t is equal to 2, you multiply e to the minus 2 
times e to the square minus 1, and then the current decays to the inductor after that period. So this is the current through the inductor from 0 to 2 seconds. This is the current through the inductor from 2 seconds onward. And that's how you can see how the method of convolution is really nice when it comes to defining how a circuit works. You can find the impulse response when you convert the impulse current into the frequency domain. You then define the output current in terms of the input current over the output current, or I should say the output current over the input current in the frequency domain. Then you take the inverse Laplace transform and then you perform the convolution. And that's how you find the current in a circuit using this method.